I'll take us to the fourth choice because you teed it up a little bit ago. Oh, did I? Okay. You did. And so <laughs> it's the thread that I like to pull through is the idea of community and belonging. Because you are mm. really, you as a human being in your professional and personal world, I know that you take the initiative to create community and belonging. And that was the fourth critical choice that I made. I was in my 30s and I was clean and sober. I had created more professional success than I ever thought that I could. I mean, for me, it was like, yeah. oh my God, I mean, this is, I have it. And I had emotional independence and financial independence and I was rocking. And I opened my eyes and heart and realized that I was friendly with everyone, but I was friends with no one. Mm. And it is the first time that, that I wanted to create, I wanted to be a part of a community. And I realized that in order to create it, you've got to give it. So I went on my other little journey to, to create community and belonging. Tell me, I want to start with, has there ever been a time in which you felt like you, you felt like you didn't belong? How did it feel? So certainly, yes, there has, there have certainly been times where I felt like I didn't belong. Just entering medical school with an artistic background, I had people around me that had PhDs and masters in clinical science and had very different interests and very different concepts of what I found fun. <laughs> so it was, a, <laughs> it, it was, it was a place where I didn't quite feel like I fit in. Mm -hmm. Also not having a huge amount of female mentorship throughout my medical career did inspire a little bit of that, you know, need to belong. Yeah. I can't talk about belonging without talking about residency. So I don't know how much you know about medical residency. Tell me. But no, it's give, like me they, give me like the lowdown. Let me give you the lowdown. They yeah. throw you in the trenches. Yeah. Okay? Okay. You, are, you are in the trenches mm -hmm. and you are working 100 hours a week. You are extremely tired and your only sense of therapeutic sanctuary is at the Cheesecake Factory eating your feelings <laughs> with your two best friends. That is, that is really oh. your only therapeutic outlet. So it's a really tough time and you cannot get through without your community. Within my residency class, I found my best friends who I made my community, who I made my family mm -hmm. and we carried each other. That community carried me. So today, you know, that those, those friends, those best friends that I made, they are a huge part of who I am and they remain a huge part of my story. And now fast forward to a part where I'm no longer in training and you're sort of ejected into the cold, quite literally, because I live in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> so you're sort of, you know, ejected into this, this world where you're an attending, you're kind of forced to find your path again. Hmm. And I was able to earn this, this role that, I'm currently in that, like I mentioned, is really on the intersect of very different vast fields. They're on, it's on the intersect of medicine and tech and business. These are very, very vast fields. And when you sit in on these panels and these conferences, it's easy to feel like you don't belong because we all speak different languages in that sense. Mm -hmm. You know, an engineer will speak a very different language than somebody that's in clinical medicine. So initially, I, I used to I used to feel a little bit like, oh my gosh, I don't really feel like if I belong here. But then I started to take a step back and I started to ask questions. And I started to say to people, can you please explain this to me at a seventh grade level? And then and that's and that's what they did. And I found a huge God. amount of value in that. And I became more and more comfortable within that discomfort. It just gave me an opportunity to expand my knowledge and to learn more. Mm. So I really I actually really have found a sense of belonging in not belonging because it gave me the opportunity to learn. And ultimately, when you don't belong, it forced me to go out, to network, to talk to so many different people and gather information to try to figure out, you know, where is it that I belong? Oh, and ultimately, on. I think you just really start creating your own path. And that's kind of, that's kind of where I landed. 
And you expanded your network and your reach, your ability to affect change because you made it a deliberate choice to create this sense. It's almost like cross-pollinating communities. <laughs> Right. And you would yeah, be I, right. Exactly. Yeah. I love, you know, I, I love that. One of the things in my life is that I kind of, I kind of view people in my life as like buckets, like this is my family bucket and this is my professional bucket yes. and this is my friend's bucket. Yes. But one thing that I love to do is I love to bring those buckets together. That's like one of my favorite things when mm. like life intersects like that. I think that's a very beautiful thing. I think so too. And it's interesting to me because I know that I've experienced the, um, oh, what if, like, what if this person doesn't really love this person <laughs> as much yeah. as I do in this yeah. setting? Because I have the buckets. I think we all do. Mm -hmm. We all have our buckets. But the, but power comes with growth, and growth is is experiencing different people and different perspectives. And just like you were yeah. talking about, and how how better to do that and also to be the one to create that opportunity for other people. And okay, so what if they don't like each other? What is something you have is worth Like, is that the biggest loss? <laughs> Fine. Exactly. Exactly. Fine. Um, tell me a little bit about, um, uh, and I want to make sure that I get it right because white coat remote, because uh, uh, I'm very intrigued with your initiative here, because I think about that as how we can enhance community and belonging from, I think, from a care standpoint. Yeah. So White Coat Remote was born really for that reason. So we, during the pandemic, we had a lot of colleagues that were in surgical specialties that lost their jobs because they were procedural specialties and hmm. the elective clinics had just closed down. Yeah. They were either called into the hospital or they had simply just lost their job. In fact, I had a friend that what that is an anesthesiologist lost her job, couldn't find one for 3 months, had loans to pay and ended up being a bartender because she just wow. couldn't she just couldn't find anything. So we, you know, we sort of at the time my my husband, who was not my husband at the time, who was a friend at the time, uh, we kind of came together and and we we started getting all of these calls from different people, just kind of simultaneously asking us, "Do you know of any opportunities?" And we searched and searched, and it it didn't look like there was any one place where there were medical opportunities for for telemedicine jobs. Mm -hmm. And so we were kind of offhanded, piecemealing, telling people, oh, yes, I heard about this. And then we started becoming like this strange central hub for people to call saying, do you know about this job or have you heard about this job just through word of mouth? And so my my husband and his best friend, we kind of came together and then we created all we created this board where we we put down all of the you know positions that were available throughout the United States for doctors for telemedicine positions that providers just started going into and applying to mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately we expanded it um, to all to all caregivers uh, within the medical field so you know we have we have nursing positions available dietitian positions available but the point is one of our purposes to do this was that we really want to be able to retain talent within the medical field you know when just because clinics close down it it doesn't mean that a talented physician can't offer something to a patient we have patients everywhere that are in need of care so we saw this as an opportunity to one to retain talent and to really close that mismatch between you know the shortage in in caregivers and the need for care so that's how white coat remote was born and ultimately it has taught us a tremendous amount i was zero knowledge in business zero knowledge and really through this upward journey and this upward kind of battle if you will we had taken courses and things like marketing we had learned so much we had spoken to so many different people and i'm i'm really proud more of the knowledge that we've gained in in the last couple of years than than anything else it's mm. it's been a really nice it's been a really nice time uh before we go to the fifth choice i want to round this conversation up with 
you, including the example that you just provided, you deliberately create community and belonging for yourself and for others. So what does it feel like to belong? Oh, that's such a good question. I was hoping maybe you could tell me. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I I think, you know, I think it feels like home. I think that's what it feels like. I think that that's I think that's what we all yearn for. And I think that's why a lot of us are in these particular fields because we all yearn for a sense of belonging and for a sense of home. Mm-hmm. Um and and that 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 safe feeling is what you feel when you finally have that sense of belonging. It's safety, it's home. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Choose and Become interview series. To check out more episodes, go to www.trishkendall.com backslash podcast, or go to any of your favorite podcast channels, including YouTube under Trish Kendall Speaks, and you'll find this interview and more. Choose and become.